I recently got a question on one of my early videos about stretching a full length track. And to answer that question, I realized that a couple of things have changed. Number one, my process to stretching a full track has changed. And number two, the way the program goes about it has very slightly changed. Now, that video is 22 minutes long. My guess is we can really reduce that time to maybe eight or nine minutes. And the more you do this process, the faster it becomes to a point where you can do this in two or three minutes. And if you already know the BPM, you can do this in you know 30 or 40 seconds. It's really that easy of a process. And I'm not gonna say this is the best way to stretch a track, but this is the most accurate way and the way that you're going to color the track in the least, meaning that you're not gonna have to use a bunch of stretch marks to like force it onto the grid and when i think about djing and like working in something like say tractor i really think about like forcing it in here we're actually taking a different approach because imagine well this isn't even imagine you know that the person has probably made this song in a daw similar to yours using a bpm and using a full number bpm so keeping that in mind we can actually try and recreate what the artist saw the reason why this is a struggle for a lot of people, especially like at the beginning, is you don't recognize or realize that with mastered music, they always put some kind of a gap at the beginning. So we come in here and we see silence for quite a bit of time. Of course, I'm zoomed into the extreme, but we see silence for quite a bit of time at the beginning. And that silence isn't usually something that's... Um, necessarily going to be related to the actual grid and the BPM of the track. Now, hopefully YouTube doesn't take this video down, but we all know they're guilty until proven innocent uh, <laughs> uh, logic when it comes to things like this. And, uh, you know, that's just the joy of big business, right? It's really making our lives so much better. Uh, obviously, that's a conversation for another time. But let's just talk about this process. And if you have any additional questions, feel free to let me know. So we're going to start by trying to get the tempo right ourselves. And if we look here, we're in raw mode. It's guessed that the tempo is 128.79. I'm guessing that is incorrect. I'm assuming the person didn't work at such an odd decimal number. It's possible, but unlikely. And I'm just going to play this back. And holding the control key, I can hit the play button. And that is going to allow me to start to tap the tempo. So let's go to a place where that's going to be helpful for us. Now, I actually got really close to what this actually is, 125. But for example, let's say that I was wrong and I guessed that it was 127. This is going to be how you actually figure out what the BPM probably is. I'm going to move this over just to give myself a little bit of space and you'll understand why. But I'm making sure to move it over in like an eight bar sort of uh, way. So right onto the nine there instead of starting on the one. And most of these songs are still made in four, eight, 16 bar sections. So you want to make sure that you move your track accordingly. Otherwise, things can get confusing. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the mode into repitch and I'm going to change the tempo to have it sync up with what I guessed it was, which in this case is 127. And by doing this, we actually haven't changed anything. These numbers are the same. Therefore, we haven't changed any sort of playback speed. No algorithm is really being used here. And if I go to raw and repitch, absolutely no difference. The next thing I need to find is a downbeat that is also the start of a section meaning the start of like a 4, 8, 16 bar section, preferably the start of a larger hole because nine times out of 10, that is not the place where a producer or an artist is syncopating or swinging things. You need something to be directly on the beat in order to then swing off of it. So this part at the beginning should work really well. So there it is. That's the one right there. OK, one other thing to take note of is if for some reason you're losing the display, you can always drag it out. And the reason for that is because if you think about it, um, let's say that at 97, the 97th bar to get to the 97th bar at 127 takes three minutes and one second. 
okay? To get to the 97th bar at like 77 uh, BPM, for example, is going to be uh, quite a bit longer. And so if we were in raw mode, you would see how this would then move and change. Once we go into one of these stretch modes, it's trying to then put it to the grid. So I'll go back into repitch, go back to that 127 part, make sure we can see everything. And let's find where that one is falling. So let's go back. One, okay. So there it is, this spot right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm going to put my stretch marker, which is going to be the stretch marker that then everything else is based on. So I could line it right up. I'm going to give it just a tiny bit of space. I'm assuming that there's a little bit of a gap before the transient hits. I don't know that for certain. It won't matter one way or the other. If you're close enough, it's definitely close enough. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose to start audio event here. Now from this point, I want to drag this onto another one of these defined eight bar sections, meaning I'm going to go out to, let's say, the 33rd bar here, because I know this is the start of a section. So let's also put it at the start of a proper eight bar division. So now if we listen back and we turn the metronome on, we'll know we got this right if it sounds like it's in time. Sounds okay for a couple bars and then it starts to fall off. And if we even go forward here into where this goes into uh, the bridge, for example, or the breakdown, you're gonna hear how far off we really are. So I get the sense and feeling like this sound is triggering to us that we're in the bridge and therefore it should be falling back here at the 57.1 because if we look, 57 is one of those eight bar divisions. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the tempo and I'm just going to pull it back and see if I can line this up a little bit closer. So if I go forward, we can see that it's falling farther and farther out of time. But as I go backwards it starts to get closer and then get very close and almost sink in here at 125. So now if I go back and play this back, we're gonna hear that it is playing it slightly lower, but that we should be closer to being on the grid. One. 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 So I now have determined that this was made, when the person made the track, they did so at 125 BPM. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and sync that up here. Okay, so now we should be playing back normally and we have our stretch marker in at 125 and I can pull this back and we can now listen to it once again and it should sound like the regular track. <laughs> And it sounds pretty good, but I can actually take this a step further. And knowing that this was made at 125, I actually don't necessarily have to go in and use a start audio event here because that can actually then sometimes throw things off going either to the left or to the right. And that is not what I want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna get rid of this and I'm now gonna go in and I'm gonna find it yet again, that start. <laughs> And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to manually drag this over now. So I'm still in repitch mode and that's pretty important. You can see that this actually changed when I deleted the stretch marker. So that's also a, a, a pretty critical part to this. I'm gonna go back to 125 and now let's find where it starts. One. And now I'm gonna drag it over and imagine that I was like the actual artist. So just listen to how this will actually fall back in time here. Perfect. So I can actually imagine now that obviously this would all be dragged over to the beginning, but this is probably what the artist was seeing. 
And that's the crucial and key part to this. So now, even in repitch mode, it doesn't matter what mode on him, I can put in a stretch marker anywhere. It doesn't matter where I put this. And the beauty of this is that I don't have to move or touch anything. This is really just acting as a placeholder, but it is in effect now stretching our track. Okay, you can see that nothing changed. It didn't move this to 125.01 or 124, anything like that. We've just lined it up manually using our eyes, finding it, fitting it to the grid. And now when I play this back, I could go into a different mode. I could change the BPM, whatever, and it's going to keep it in time without having to do any extra work from the um, stretch algorithm section. It's not like we have eight of these all trying to keep things in time. This should be in time all the way across, so. So now if I play ahead, or we could go to one of the other modes. Etc. like so. And it's even possible to kind of check this by going back to the beginning and looking and seeing like, okay, this does seem like a part where something was put on the one. In this case, there are some kick drums that come up. So I can look and see, okay, this is really, really close. This seems like it's about right. And we could go back and delete the stretch mark and then try to even set things up closer. But honestly, this is close enough. Once you start zooming in to these extreme levels, it doesn't really matter anymore. As long as you're in that ballpark, you're going to have it. And uh, in my opinion, this is the most accurate and... Um, you know, way to use the algorithms the least, so to speak. You're not dragging anything. You're not pulling anything one way or the other. It's basically just that raw audio file with a stretch marker serving as a bookmark instead of pulling it onto beat. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, but this is now the way I go about stretching full tracks, and it seems to work uh, magnificently well. So thanks a lot, and uh, take it easy.